Welcome to a podcast from beneath. In this third installment of Found Footage February, we review Hell House LLC. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. The unburied dead are coming back to life, seeking human victims. Hell House LLC 2015, a documentary crew, is investigating a tragedy that fell on a haunted house tour five years ago. We see the events through the interviews by the crew, YouTube videos posted by, by survivors of that night, and footage recorded by the team that were putting on the haunted house. So um, what do you guys think of this film? Eric, we'll uh, go ahead and let you start since I know how you feel about it already. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, it was just boring. It just I, as soon as the movie started, it was easily telegraphed and just it was just kind of just waiting for it, you know, just wait for the end to come. Oh, there it is. Well, that was an hour and a half. I'll never get back. <laughs> Billy, what'd you think about it? Uh, um, I mean, <laughs> ask, ask I, him I how the trailer was. Yeah, I didn't like. Um, <laughs> I really didn't like the acting. You can or, say it was bad. It was bad. It was bad. <laughs> the only go. thing that creeped me out was like uh, the clowns. Oh yeah, that was that was kind of funky. Is how their heads turn. Like that was the only thing that uh, I mean, you know, it was okay. I was, oh, that kind of was creepy. But other than that, nah. I didn't even like the um like pseudo document like documentary stuff. It was just. All those people were really bad. Like, I've never heard a cop or ex-cop talk like that guy did. He was totally bogus. Like, they're always so affirmative, like, with their information, you know? And this guy was just like, oh, yeah, man, those kids, ugh, sucks to be them. I'm like, who the fuck is this fucking narc? Nobody fucking, he's stupid. He was just one of those, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, no, no, by all no, means. He, he was just one of those guys that, like, like wanted to be a cop, never actually became a cop. So he like got a fake badge and stuff. It was like, yeah, murder happened here. <laughs> He's like Terrible. a security guard at a mall somewhere. <laughs> yeah. He's Paul Blart. No oh, God. I wouldn't say I would rather watch Paul Blart. That's I, I can't do that. The movie wasn't that bad. <laughs> uh, those but, people are like really bad at running up the stairs. That's every horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to be bad at running in a horror movie. But First like off, even like, the dude. Oh, oh yeah. go ahead. There you go. I was gonna say the the guy with the beard. The um, I forgot what it was like the investigative journalist maybe. Yeah. That was also a part of the um. What, this movie's almost like a movie in a movie. The interview. Um, part, yeah, the interview thing. Yeah, like he kept looking into the camera. It was it was so fucking maddening when you have an interview. You're talking to the person asking the questions. You're not fucking bogarting the camera. It's so weird to make eye contact with a guy as they're having an interview. It's so funky. He always shows up to every girl he brings home. Hey, you know I was in this movie. Uh, maybe you've heard of it. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Yeah, maybe maybe it'll distract you from uh, my beard. How it looks like I eat garbage all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, how well, how well do you think they handled like the found footage parts of it? Where, like, you know, the reasoning for all the footage, where had... the footage is coming oh. from. Oh, how they handled it? It's it's bare minimum. It's exactly what you'd expect. I had a hard like, time uh, following the camera, like especially at the end when they're like when you see actually can see what happens at the end. I had to rewind. I was like. What the fuck is even happening? Like, cause it was so kind of shaky and stuff. I had like had to couldn't really focus, so I had uh, problems with it. But yeah, I what mean, you, what'd you think about like the um, like the reasoning for all the footage? You know, what I'm saying like uh, I, that, oh, that, that's always the problem in found footage films is why are they still recording? Yeah, mm-hmm. like if I've seen someone getting murdered, I, first last thing on my mind is like, oh, I better keep this camera. Like, yeah. I'm going to throw it at whatever's happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to push everybody out of my fucking way. Or I'm going to start hitting people with cameras to get out. <laughs> <laughs> like, you better get the fuck out of my way. 
You're that guy. You're not the hero. You're the guy no. pushing people's traffic and shit. I'm the George Costanza. Fire's coming up pushing <laughs> everybody. That's a good one. Well, that's that's what the um, that's what that the the guy that they hired to play the clown. That's what he did. Oh, he bounced before like <laughs> the crazy shit happened. He's like, yeah. nope. You just have you see just him running past that one camp where those the two the two the two people were hiding in the um, I guess they built like a little room for them to hide in. You just see him like run past real quick, and they're just like, oh, "What's this guy doing?" Yeah, he was the, he was huge too. He's like six foot something, big build. So he probably plowed through a dozen people to get out of that <laughs> place. That, because that he, was remember, the, that was remember the he people was, that died was the one <laughs> he was getting out. Because he's, he's a train. <laughs> yeah. No, but the, he he's the guy that was in the basement. He was going to be like the um, what is it? The, he, like a disguised bodyguard because they had that woman chained to a wall. So he had to get through that whole crowd of people to get out of that place. And like nothing, like the lights were still on. I wonder like what happened that freaked him out so bad. Man, I heard that mannequin fart. I didn't get the fuck out of there. Dude, if I heard a mannequin fart, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> he was out and he killed himself. They said he found him like weeks later and he like hung himself. Yeah. Because he couldn't live with the fact that he murdered a dozen people as he trampled them <laughs> on the way out of the place. He didn't even say anything, Bernard. Like, go out there. He. He's like quietly out. He's just like. Mm. <laughs> so I guess there's no point in asking your guys' um, favorite character or least favorite character, right? Oh, uh, I don't uh, remember their names. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Like, oh, no, no. I remember one guy, uh, Paul, because he goes missing. Yeah. Uh, that, well, yeah. He was my favorite. That's who I picked as my favorite. Who was the girl? Was her name like Katie? Was like so, the yeah. first half of the movie? They were talking about Paul. Which I know you want to see Katie naked. Like they mentioned that a lot. I thought in the beginning of the movie, like how he wants to see her tits all the time. Eh, that's just like really bad writing. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like a lot of horror movies are, like try to squeeze some TNA or some like awkward stuff. Like yeah, you've they, always got to have. T- you've always got to have that one date rapist in your movie. Yeah. Oh man, it's nobody. Nobody acts like this. I promise. Real people do not do that. And, <laughs> and uh, just... when, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, when Paul got a, a, you know, when he was in his room, he turned the camera on. That thing was in his room. Like no one heard him make fucking noise. Like he, he kind of was screaming. I thought like someone was going to come in there, but like end up the next scene. Hey, where's Paul? So you guys can hear him scream. It's it, you it's can hear a for... piano play. Yeah. It's a little further in the movie, but that's that's my favorite part because I legitimately laughed so hard I dropped my phone. <laughs> it's, like, it, it was it was the next morning. Like there's like, oh, where's Paul? It's like, oh man, remember when Paul left four years ago? Yeah, he's a total shit burger. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? You just totally turned on the guy. But then what made me laugh is like, okay, calm down. Let's just call him. You know, have his number on the cell phone, and we'll see where he is. So as you know, they dial on the phone, and he put he puts it up to his ear. And what answers wasn't Paul, it was a fucking jump scare. <laughs> it made me laugh right. so fucking hard. They just called a jump scare. <laughs> that that guy that was who ran it, who like, Mr. Fucking God, I want some money. It's like, dude, six people have died while we're trying to, you know, make this on the house. What are we gonna do? Nothing's happened. Alright, do you not want to do this? Yeah, All he right? was my he was my least favorite because he was like he was just the generic, you know. Asshole. We have we have to do this no matter what happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just like I hate when they have characters like that in um, like you know, in movies. Paul is like Paul well, because if you oh. okay, no, 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 no. Said so Paul, hey, Paul, you... Paul just killed himself. We still got to do this, guys. Opening night is tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, you have to have people like that in movies like this because there is no way. That real people would stay there any longer than they had to. Oh, yeah, I'd have been, <laughs> I'd have been out. And what also got me is when uh, Katie was like talking to the wall. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" I like how we don't even remember her name. We're just gonna call her Katie. <laughs> is that not her name? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so Carolyn was talking to the wall over there, and we're just like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh, what's her name?" Oh, it's Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) See, I told you. It doesn't matter. Like, it's going to change every time we bring it up. So Susan was just, like, looking at the statue and, like, park. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And, like, they didn't think anything was weird with Paul when they found him. Like, he was, like, not talking. 
Oh, this is fine. This is normal, Paul. Katie or Julie or Melissa, whatever her name is. <laughs> Insert white name. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the, um, I guess like the acting was, I guess, fine for a found footage film. Um, I, but, I want to call it serviceable, serviceable at best. Yeah. But like whenever, like the scene where, she, where the scene where she's like just standing, staring at the wall, and they, I guess, wakes her up, and she starts freaking out. That was some like they could they 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 couldn't act above just having a normal conversation, if that yeah. makes any sense. Like yeah. they they were really good at just you know stand over there and act like you're having small talk. <laughs> yeah. No. But, they, oh, but then their small to, talk you know, is horseshit here. because they're like, oh, you just yeah. want to see her boobies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paul, boobs. <laughs> 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 yeah, Paul. <laughs> um, and uh, what made me laugh too is like you know when everybody's like running out of the haunted house and they're like the audio they had for the screaming, and you can clearly tell when the people are running they weren't even opening their mouths. It's like where the fuck is this coming from? Well, I mean. You know, it's so genius because even yeah. in Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, they didn't even cast a shadow. So it's all, you know, it's like poetry. It rhymes. Yeah, it's like poetry. It's like you ask the director about this thing. You guys just don't know art, okay? Oh, the director's Alan Smithy, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Who's that? No, it's a, it's like an inside joke. Alan, oh. Smithy's, Alan Smithy's the name you write down when you don't want to be associated, You're associated with, with yeah. it. Yeah. Oh really? It's like it's like John Doe. Oh. <laughs> what else is this guy? Guys, That's a joke for the audience, I see. You know, uh, <laughs> he made a Hell House LLC too. The abandoned. The Are we Abaddon already talking Hotel. about the sequel? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I was looking up the director. I just saw it. it yeah, I couldn't remember if I'd year. seen it or not. Yeah, I couldn't remember if I'd seen it or not. And then I watched the trailer, and I was like, Oh wait, I did see the sequel. It's like. This time, Paul gets boobs. Wow! So basically, it's like what the same movie, just in a different place. No, it's, it's in the same place. It's I think it's about um, an actual like ghost hunters type group go there to investigate what happened to the. Oh my god! It's... That was any fucking excuse. Uh, Come on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know. Let's investigate the investigation that went missing last year. <laughs> and then the third one's going to be like, like we're going to do a cooking show on a, in the haunted house. And it's going to be like Guy Furry. That's, <laughs> it's going to be in that the uh, Abaddon or is that what it was? The Abaddon yeah. hotel. And, and like, I, I that made me roll my eyes so hard because that's just the word abandon. By the way, yeah, <laughs> that's all that is. I thought the um, the way the owner of the hotel uh, like killed himself. Hey, two people's missing. Oh, I got questioned by the cops. Oh, I better hang myself. <laughs> well, it's been a good one, boys. Yeah, it's been a good six months. I noticed in that picture there wasn't anything under his feet, like a chair or anything. So he just took like a jump shot and <laughs> yeah. gave it. Holy. <laughs> It was the it was the same way the priest died in uh, City of the Living Dead. He just he climbed the tree, tied it off, and just fell off. Yeah. He's like, "Hey, he look, just, I'm gonna see a lot He stuck himself. Yeah, yeah. It's like his it's like kids come in. Pops, yeah. what are you doing? Have you seen that movie Heather's? Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh man, it's good to like what honestly honestly talk shit about a movie. <laughs> Like been a good one. <laughs> yeah. What was the last well, one? Uh... All right, all right. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We get like I know Bill and I were not even indifferent about it. We didn't really like it. But Carrie, you enjoyed this picture. What do you yeah, I say? Thought, I thought it was. I mean, I thought it was decent for what it was. Um, and I think it was the way they done some of the scares. Like I know there was that one jump scare with the cell phone. Yeah. But oh, with that made me other, laugh. I swear. Yeah. But with all the with the all the other, you know, like scary moments in it was just, you know, someone standing in the corner. And like the one that got me the worst was whenever he when he turns the camera on that woman sitting on the floor. 
and he like covers himself up with a sheet and i'm just thinking oh why, yeah like why would you do that like that's you do not do that you don't cover yourself up because, because now, he's 11 years old that's why yeah that's if what you i cover think, yourself they yeah. can't get you into the covers yeah but sweet, i just kept thinking sweet chin music <laughs> but i just kept thinking now, now you have to look out you you have to keep checking you know and i, and I just knew every time he looked it was gonna be closer um uh, you know that and just with you know like i said like with the uh the clown, yeah, which the clown really is cute, supposed to be know. just a mannequin. You know, we, we know it's just a mannequin. And the okay. fact that he's just standing there. I mean, yeah, the, I mean, okay. the, the clown creeped uh, creep me out, yeah. Uh, clowns are always fucking weird. Yeah, but I, I was going to say, the one thing that kind of worked, that actually kind of, like, drew me in a little bit, like, I was, like, looking really hard at the, the little screen, was um, when they tested their strobe lights on their camera system. And every other frame, there was a different like a different entity thing, in the back there. Yeah, in the back. Yeah, oh like, yeah, oh, that was a good one. I was like, what is that? What? Oh shit. Okay, all right, you got me. What is that? You got me. But then th- that was completely deflated by the guy. who's like, no, oh, that's nothing. Whatever. We're still gonna do the show in fifteen minutes. All right, everybody pack themselves in. <laughs> like whatever, dude. Yeah. Fun fact about that scene. Apparently, whenever he whenever he finally gets the door open or whatever, and he runs out and he jumps up over the bar and he. Th- throws up apparently that actor like really threw up in that scene why i i don't know it just said that he really threw up hung over <laughs> well, that's i don't know what to say to that what kind of ad-libbing is that <laughs> you know I mean, what do you what do you what can i say i mean what if he did that in another scene without any context like he just like walked uh, around hey <laughs> just threw up yeah it's like hey here's the chick that's gonna take her top off <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that clown really um, creeped me out. I, I saw a thing on um, uh, what was it? Someone said about this movie. It's like uh, a clown that will put Pennywise to shame. And I was like, you're fucking stupid. Yeah, the clown was creepy, but it wasn't like it wasn't Pennywise. Tim Curry, Pennywise, creepy. Yeah, I mean it wasn't creepy because it was a clown though. It was just yeah. A, it could have been it could have been any of their yeah. It was just the way standing there, the way the mask looked, True. like the way the yeah. the makeup I mean, or the the face of the mask and shit. Well, I mean that's what kind of I mean it kind of irked me a little bit. It's like this movie did have a limited release, so people paid real money to be scared by Halloween store props. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I, of course, I thought the uh, when they when they. When they're in the basement and they you just see just the hooded figures in the like around the corner, I thought that was decent. That was the Illuminati. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, there's, I mean, what killed me was like I, I kept yearning for information, and like nothing was given to me. Like they found a bunch of Bibles and like a what you might call a pentagram and stuff in the in the basement, but there there was no other information there. Like we like who were these people? Like there was no myth or legend, you know, there wasn't any mythos. Yeah, they never talked like, about that the, the guy that owned the hotel was into any crazy shit. Yeah. He was he was just, just like, uh, yeah, he just owned a hotel, two people went missing, a mother and daughter. That was it. And he killed himself. Yeah, the kid the cops start closing in, even though he's innocent, he just fucking the Yeah. Cop, yeah. <laughs> Well, they're gonna save that for a part three. <laughs> yeah, it's when a black do, metal they band. They do. They do his backstory. <laughs> it's the a black, black metal, metal band. Yeah, black yeah. metal band. Like, like, little thing. Yeah, they found the hotel was like abandoned because a guy killed himself. Like, well, we play uh, metal and worship Satan here, guys. Yeah, it was a black metal band. Those guys in the ropes. It was a black metal band. Case no, solved. Slip, Slipknot from Mandy. Yeah, yeah. case <laughs> solved. And of course, I really didn't. the The ending was um, I didn't really like the way they done it to where because yeah. I think a lot of movies do it where they're oh, they mean, they're they're interviewing they, the last survivor and then oh come to find out they were dead the entire time that you know you were and they were interviewing a ghost and then they the you know, they get suckered into going back and then they get killed. That made me groan out loud. I was like, uh. Come Wait, on, I, when they showed the footage again that she actually died, did they see it or did or one one of their friends stayed behind, didn't they? Yeah, I guess one of their assistants stayed behind it's like, when they went there, and then she are, watched the tape. Yeah, are you not gonna call them? It's like, plus, why would you? She go did. To she a did. Hotel? Um, whoever it was that was watching the tape did call them, and that one was like, "Yeah, I won't answer it right now. I'll, you know, I'll call them back." Yeah, oh, sure, you did. 
Yeah, he had thought it was stupid. Yeah, let's go and break into this place where like shit has happened. Like fuck that. I'm like, sorry, I got all I want from the story. I don't have to get any more information. Well, like you just, it's one of those things where like they made this movie and they're like, man, it has to have a twist regardless of it making sense or not. Yeah, they but see the, but it doesn't though. Like you don't need to have that. You know, the last the last person was actually a ghost or whatever. Um, you know, they could have just had a Blair Witch ending where it was, you know, the the incident happened and then you know that's it. Because it's a found footage, that's all you would that you know. There's no other footage to to see. So yeah, they could have just just, ended it with they could have just ended it with Paul like killing her. And then that's it. That would have ended. That would have been a better ending. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I, I think that'd been a better way to do it instead of. But I, I, I'm a, I'm sure that they were already setting up the sequel, which is probably why they done the the twist ending there, so they could. Well, I think they could have do done it. the sequel if they didn't have the ending that they had. They just ended with. Uh... Well, uh, I mean, like you can always write sequels to movies. I mean, there's no end to like just. Trying to like you know write your way out of like a an ending like that. It's just there's no point to have an ending like they had. Yeah. I mean, like I said, they just they had to throw a twist in there because every horror movie has a twist. Man, Jigsaw was on the floor the whole time. Spoiler. Yeah. Alert. Yeah, but I, I think nowadays people. I think nowadays studios want. Hey, you're going to give us three movies. You know what I'm saying? They're they always have to. They're always setting up sequels, no matter what it is. Even even if it's a movie they know does not need a sequel, but <laughs> they're gonna it have stu- that. Was it a studio release? No, I'm I'm just saying in general, like that's yeah. that's how movies are written these days. You know, make sure you leave something in there for you know if it does really well, then we can you know we'll be set up for a sequel. Mm. Oh, because you, I, I you have all these movies that are that do poorly, and they they were set up for a sequel that you never get. <laughs> Well, th- I can't. This movie didn't make any fucking money. Like, what are they doing? Like, I, I know, like, it's on Amazon Prime, and they get like a chunk for every, like, all the ad re- revenue and stuff. But come on, man! This, this guy tried to make such a shitty movie, so he didn't have to make another one. Like, the, he was like, "You're all beginning to make two movies." He's like, "Well, oh if I make God. the first one, so shitty." Oh, well, is it like the another. producers? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like the uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm episode, they hired Larry David. Like, he's gonna ruin the show for us. And oh, people fucking loved it. Like, oh, oh we need the stage play. Yeah, oh, that was I, great. Yeah, that's that's what you know. If I make this first one real shitty, I don't have to do the second one. People actually saw the first one and like actually made some money. He's like, what the fuck? I, I like I can't think not think of that episode <laughs> and that woman with the giant cans and him getting all frustrated about it. That's <laughs> so good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hell House. I mean, Hell House LLC is a terrible name to start with. What's LLC stand for? Like, hey, don't sue it's, us, original. It, no, it's, it's it's like a company. It, yeah. You know. So I guess they were trying to say like, oh, these are this group of people is like a company that go from town to town each year, and they'll set up like a a pop up oh, yeah. house, make some money, off to the next one. You know what? Whatever. Uh, people, I mean. That would have been actually a decent haunted house, like, if that, you know... I thought they did a pretty good job. Yeah, that was actually... It was a, it was a real haunted house that they that they were allowed to film in. So you're saying they, they spent the... zero money on decorations? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this movie cost, like, five bucks and a trip to Wendy's. Well, that's, that's why he got to make it a sequel. Show the, yeah, it doesn't show the... Um, how much they spent on oh, IMDb. Not... No. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Remember how excited we were when we were talking about Curb Your Enthusiasm? <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you... What is that even... It says also known as... What is that? A- O-O-O? A-K-A. Oh, I have, I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, that... I, I don't know. Well, does, it have, does it have an alternate title? Yeah, it's like a uh, foreign... <laughs> Oh, then why even try? For a second, I thought you were serious. Like, it's Hell House or Ooh. ooh. <laughs> it's like my, my Cheerios are trying to tell me something. That's, says, how they were, that's how they were the script, was alphabets. 
<laughs> it was just Mad Libs. Oh my god, it says connections. I am legend. Did okay. They mention, did they mention it's, I am legend in this movie, or just I don't know. It just said I am connection. Legend? I don't know. It says in maybe this is the prequel to I am legend. It was the Aberdeen house. It caused the virus. Well, they both have shit endings, so maybe you're right. Goofs. It says, in many scenes, characters search through the hotel at night with a flashlight, seeking the cause of a disturbance. Often scared, yet never once turn on the lights. Is that really a goof, or is that just poor writing? That's what it says, Goofs. <laughs> it gave it Wait. 8 out of 10. Surprisingly effective found footage. Yeah, it had um, on uh, information about it. It's got a 6.4, and... Um... On Rotten Tomatoes, it's got an 80 and an audience score of 69. Are you serious? Ooh, so yeah. professional score is 80 and the audience score is 69. 69. LOL. Yep. Uh-huh. Somebody's lying. It's all their family. <laughs> so we, like, no, but yeah, but the review But the Rotten the Tomato score is like legitimate you know, publications, the audience score is like what people review it. So there are people who have merit in the journalism field gave this a thumbs up or Let, high let's percentage. not say merit. You, you got to have like, you can be some kind of shitty man. Let's say, let's see the people that review that. Hang on. The ghosts of Cisco and Ebert come back from the dead and fuck with everybody on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like uh, they come out a thing of they come out of like a come out of a thing of goo like the Scalari brothers from Ghostbusters too. Uh, the blogging <laughs> banshee. I'm I already box. Hate this. Suddenly a shot rang out. Film inquiry, an eye for film. As in, like you can look at film and tell that it's film. Like what are they talking about here? E Y E. Eye for film. I oh wait I and had one bad review I for film says the camera work is handled better than in many such works then the layered plot adds a modicum of mystery but the characters are woefully undeveloped and the acting is toneless well they're not wrong so there's one genuine person in this group of bullshit extremely uh, seasonal in the best way. What does that mean? It's oregano? What? <laughs> what kind of stupid review is that? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it's only got five reviews on here. Yeah. If you enjoy quality found footage and find subtle scares to be the most terrifying, then Hell House LLC is the film for you. It is the perfect Halloween horror flick That's to watch with a group of you, a, a group if you want a good scare. You mean if I want a good drunk night? <laughs> Watch this shitty movie with some friends. Have a party. Whatever. I miss Afflicted. Well, not all the scares work perfectly. It's a damn fine piece of bound footage horror. It's also a creepy clown that puts Pennywise to shame. So, basically, this guy spent no money on the movie and all his money paying off these critics. <laughs> I was waiting for, like... Before you guys say anything, I, you know, just because I was in the film doesn't mean I owe somebody a good review. I, I actually enjoyed the movie that I was in, okay? <laughs> Hell House LLC. Also, so, one of the reviews is from a guy that was in the movie. I'm just joking now. I was like, oh, okay. oh <laughs> that would be funny if it was. You had me. <laughs> it's like, this is one fine piece of found footage cinema. Oh, wait. Uh, I don't know. Alan Smith, the director of. <laughs> no, sorry, there's a, there's a there was a super uh, reviewer, Jesse Ortega. He gave it two stars, and he says, "And now we come to that most continuous and much is it malign? I don't know what that is of any sub horror subgenre in the found footage horror movie. I've always felt the need to take or need to come to the defense of the genre simply because there's so many." Of these out there, and I'm sure. Oh, I don't want to read it all. I thought it was gonna be like really bad. It is bad. Oversaturated, and it wasn't doing this genre any favors. I still found this more entertaining than uh, America's 
was it? Yes, it was definitely better than America's Deadliest on Videos. Oh, Deadliest. Anything is better than Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> but not as good. Definitely not as good as Afflicted. I'm going to say it was just as good as Afflicted. You son of a I'm bitch. Sure. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. I come through your uh, headphones, hit you. <sighs> this movie had better acting than Afflicted. Yeah. Oh, no. Afflicted was much. <laughs> no way. Afflicted was better. I'm trying to keep the fight going. No, oh. <laughs> the lighting in this movie was better. All right, like now it. you just—I've I, I, right, never you cried just... before, but <laughs> certainly, certainly heading this way. I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, it was. I hear. Uh, like I, said, I hear Hell House was filmed in Barcelona <laughs> and uh, Paris. It's filmed in Ohio. <laughs> you know what? You're probably not wrong. I think they filmed it in um, Philadelphia. I think. Oh. Ooh, West Philadelphia, born and raised. I, no wonder, what's who... the, I wonder what's the connection to fucking I Am Legend. Uh, I didn't even see that. I didn't even see that on here. It was on I, well, I mean, okay, so there's, was well, it like I Am Legend with Will Smith, or is that crappy, like, asylum picture? I, uh, let's see, I don't know, let's see. Cause I know, like, the written book that that movie's based on, I think is public domain. Well, you know the owner of Asylum now follows us on Twitter. We could just ask him. Put us in one of your movies. <laughs> oh, he's not going. He's going to unfollow us now. We're talking shit about his movie. So what? <laughs> he doesn't have the balls to take some yeah. criticism. He doesn't deserve to be he's in the just movie. Making business. movies for money. He doesn't care. Yeah. Like I'll chill out. Fuck it. Asylum yeah. film is so good. It's just I don't know. Make you shit your pants. I don't know. Fuck it. Just. Uh, connection. Just... I am Legend. See more. All right, hang on. I mean, all they do is, if something's coming out, they just kind of copy the name and put it on video. I guess their, like, connections is, like, it's kind of like the same movie as The Wolfman. Whatever what? happened to Baby Chain? Night of the Living <laughs> Dead. What the hell is this, like, Six Degrees of Bullshit? It, say, it says The Wolfman. Alex mentions it. Have, whatever happened to Baby Jane? Paul sings two lines from... I've written a letter. Yeah, that's just, yeah, that's stuff that happened in this movie. I thought you meant like that's why I, I, I thought what I saw you, like, first. This movie was playing like somewhere on a TV, and the movie. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I just saw connections. I was like, I am legend, and then all this came up, and I was like, oh, <laughs> damn, you got to have this in your movie. Yeah, we mentioned uh, some big Halloween, <laughs> big movies. You know, Halloween, certain themes, camera work, and editing. Which... This movie had a camera in it. Well, yeah. I Am Legend was filmed with a camera. Wow. Pac-Man. Sarah wears a Pac-Man t-shirt. Escape from New York. Sarah and Paul mentions it. Oh, my Aladdin. God. The Aladdin one, that's Sherry. cheap. Yeah, that's Jasmine. cheap. He just calls her Jasmine, so they're going to say, oh, they mentioned Aladdin. Hitch. Sarah and Paul mention it. I Am Legend. Paul alludes to it. Cloverfield. Sarah make a reference. Uh, Paul. <laughs> I was going to put... Monster, and it says, Paul took shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's an actual movie. Monster. Monster is get the... an actual movie. Huh? Did you say Monster? Can... Monster okay. is a real movie. <laughs> See, this is... Fair. Oh, I was about to pitch my recruitment speech for uh, the asylum, because, okay, you know, okay. I got... <clears throat> Please. Hello. <laughs> no, just nobody said anything. Oh, I thought oh. you were going to... That, gonna... <laughs> that was my pitch, just please. Oh, oh <laughs> please. I'm only about that silence in there. That'll be... Okay. <laughs> one of the reviews... I'm trying not to laugh. One of the movies we got to review, guys, now, next, I mean, not next, but soon, has to be Monster. I've never heard Is of it Monster. It? It's a real movie. It's got a 3.8. And it says a serial uh, killer mutates with a chemical inside the sewer to become a monster made of human waste. Just as the FBI and the police are on the head. Oh my god, please. <laughs> Can like we FBI must, man? We must FBI be man. throwing a dart at like a wall of um, trauma films. And just... Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, if if I can stand in front of that dart board, just wing me in the eye. I want to watch these <laughs> okay. fucking movies. Mm. Oh my god. Wind up watching like the a... or something. 
These are all right. Th- it says more like this. Are you guys? Are, are, oh my god, retarded! Oh no, <laughs> we're not watching that movie. Yeah, but it's like dead. You know, G E A D. Oh, that's so bad. Uh, oh. rectum, rectuma. It was like rectroma. This just says rectuma. Uh, Sharknado. Of course, we all know this. Gingerbread Man versus Evil Bong. No, or Ginger Dead that's Man. A, that's a full moon feature. Yeah. Oh my god. We gotta think of some uh, movie ideas. Yeah. So, <laughs> that Asylum guys are listening right now. Yeah. Okay. All we have to do is take two words and smash them together and that makes a movie. <laughs> Killer Coffee. There's a movie mm. A coffee maker that every time you drink it your soul dies. <laughs> oh man, just take take it even further. Make the pun. Make you hate the pun. So instead of like, uh, instead of like killer coffee pot, it'd be like, uh, Mister Kilfy. Okay, yeah. look better. <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ. I one month. Oh, I got it. Okay, I got it. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, go ahead. You just, you just need. <laughs> it struck me like a bolt of lightning. So you could have like a prehistoric beast. From wherever space, uh, Baradactyl. <laughs> Baradactyl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, it's, and it's from space. Fuck it. Space is cheap. It's black. You don't have to film in front of anything. Just turn the lights out. <laughs> I just hey. saved them a million dollars. I got another one. It's a creature. It's called Spider Tits. It's a. It's tits. <laughs> it's a spider <laughs> <laughs> oh and, and no! It, sh- it shoots um web out like, of nipples. Yeah, they had like <laughs> fucking um oh, what do you call them? Like poison she's, um. She's got like silly string needles or something. Yeah, I would say that's probably already a trauma movie. What's well, better to <laughs> yeah. Man, Lloyd Kaufman. Or, or, or a Corbin film. Or Pussy Spider. Drunk <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Golden serious. Fellas. So what, is, what is that guy's name from Asylum that followed us? Uh, let me, I'll have to go to the Twitter here and look at it. David Michael Latt. <laughs> well, Mr. Latt. Not only did I just give myself a Charlie horse, but the movie Baradactyl is a fantastic idea. And, like, if it gets big enough, we can get some stars in there. Baradactyl versus The Roctopus. Sequel. There you go. That's third, the silver screen right there. The third one, Baradactyl versus Spider Tits. <laughs> Requiem. <laughs> Requiem. <laughs> We're going to have a twist see, ending for the third let's one. Let's see, Spider Tits would have been perfect for, like, the 3DD thing. You know what I'm saying? 3DD. <laughs> oh, yeah, like Piranha. Yeah. You know, I bet we can pitch... Let's see if the guy from Asylum will do Spider Tits, or we can just pitch a... Mr. Corman, he'd be like, You had me at tits. Here's $15,000. <laughs> No, see, Corman comes in after we go to the asylum. We've made the movie halfway, then they come in and realize what kind of bullshit we're pulling. They pull the plug, then Corman comes in with his $50,000 and a bunch of titties. <laughs> <laughs> Saves the day. It's a bare dag to become bare tits. All right. So this movie was not all that good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I liked it. I thought it was decent. We didn't. We never even went over like the what the movie was about. <laughs> well, he said he said the plot, and then we're just like, you know what? If they, if you know, I think they pretty much got the gist. I mean, we said so. Well, it's it's so simple. Like they yeah. these guys go around, they make a haunted house out of like an actual haunted house. Turns out it was a bad idea. <laughs> Shit hits the fan, and a guy dressed as a clown mows down twenty four people on his way out. <laughs> yeah, like. Like the guy that... I, I'm de- I'm dead serious. Think about that. Like they see him run out, but in all the footage, all those people getting stuck in the stairwell. There had to have been like forty people in his way. He made it through. <laughs> he made it out of there. 
Only to then only to then kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> Survivor's guilt. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> or murderers. Well, the, whole, guilt. The, whole, the whole time he was like getting out of he was farting the whole time. And he's like <laughs> left a huge stink and everybody's trying to get out, like, oh god. Like he just kept thinking I should have just ran through the basement wall and like yeah. made like a doorway for everybody to get out. He's like, Maybe if I would have yeah, maybe I, maybe I could have saved him. Maybe I could have been a contender. Like how like how far to like to the right could we get Asylum to make a movie? So we remake Terminator shot for shot, call right. it the Flatulator, and it's just like the Terminator with irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> and it's just like this like line for line, but there's just like farts eighty yard in the whole time, <laughs> and just <laughs> randomly. And then uh, the second I'll one. I'll be back. No, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> I shit my pants. <laughs> Good farts. Oh man, we're gonna piss so many people off. This is gonna be great. Yeah. We got a movie called uh, Fart <laughs> Fart Vampires, or was it Fart Pyres? All right. <laughs> Come to fart on you. They gave you pink eye. They fart in your face. Then you become one. Oh man, we got some golden ideas, guys. <laughs> golden turds. <laughs> golden turds. <laughs> so I'm sure there's nothing new that came out that we didn't already talk about last week. No, I can't think of. Ooh, you know what? I'll I'll throw a plug in there. I started my own pod- podcast with a couple buddies from work. Oh yeah, we should have. Yeah, we should have done that. Go ahead, tell them everything. No. And tell them all about it. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's like this, but it's not restricted to horror. It's just movies that we love. We um, Every once in a while, we'll pick five movies apiece. We'll throw it in a random generator. We'll spin the wheel, whatever it lands on, we review that week. And uh, it's called Beers and Brews. You can find us at Beard Brews Cast on Twitter. And uh, we review a movie. Uh, we review a beer. Oh, Basically, we watch a movie and we drink about it. And your first episode was on... Uh, we will watch Tombstone with uh, Kurt Russell, Val Kilmer, and Val Kilmer. Very good movie. Very good movie. My mm. favorite Val Kilmer movie. I, I actually, like, as we were watching, I had the idea. I took a picture. I tried to get a picture of the TV. I tried to get a picture of Val Kilmer. But as soon as the shutter snapped, it switched to um, Bill Paxton. But I went ahead and uh, t- I went ahead and tweeted it at Val Kilmer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh fuck it. <laughs> Thought that counts. And then of course you're it's on you're on Podbean also, so they can go there and find you to listen to it. Absolutely. Beers and brews, movie reviews. And then you're also part of the uh thirteen thirteen Inc. network. It's true, I get I keep forgetting to yeah. get that situated. I've just been so busy lately, <laughs> unfortunately. That's fine. Like, I'll go I'll go in there and throw your RSS feed on there. And then all you have to do is just upload pictures or whatever you want to put on there. I appreciate it. Um, so a couple episodes ago, we talked about a movie called um, Chopping Mall. Yes, <laughs> and uh, uh, fond so, memories of Chopping. Yeah, Mall. I think um, I think it was Billy who said, you know, one day this is really going to happen, and we're going to say we try to warn you with this movie. Well, there's a certain store that I know of that is uh, getting robots. <laughs> Uh, janitor robots and I guess some robots that are going to be stocking shelves <laughs> and this is happening soon so at this place that will not go unnamed but may or may not have started in Arkansas um, they're going to have like giant Roombas or something they're going to put like those like yellow vests on those guys like what's they, happening yeah they are they're just these gigantic robots that are going to be I guess sweeping the floors putting stuff on the shelves Oh, like those, uh, like um, little roaming things from the Judge Dredd movie. Pretty was much, yeah. Stallone. Also, that means they're going to break down and Rob Schneider's in there eating pasta. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can find a picture of him. Have you heard about you know, this yet, Billy? Yeah, I heard about it. Well, I didn't know it was going to happen. How are people okay Everywhere. <laughs> How like, are hey, people okay with this? Let's get rid of uh, humans. They probably didn't ask anybody if they're okay with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I'm... there's all kinds of projections that, like, a, a ton of workforce is going to be replaced by automation by 2030. Mm. Like, like, a lot of people think it's going to happen at 2030, but they don't realize the shit's already on its way. Yeah, but you can't. I mean, you can't stop it. So. 
Well, like, hell, they already, have, they already have self-checkouts and stuff, which are expanding all the time. Now they have all the janitorial services now automated. This is going to cause riots and shit. I just wonder if they're actually going to, like, kill people. That would be awesome if it, we actually had a real-life chopping mall. Oh, I just saw that picture. Yeah, I just hope I'm not, wor- I, I, I hope I I'm not working. Mm. Okay, first of all, nope. Can we just say Walmart? I'm tired of walking around this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but here's but, uh, the, if, if you can see this next picture. That's, that's, that's wild. One, that's what's going to be stocking shelves or whatever. So. Okay, first of all, nobody respects Walmart. Secondly, people are going to give these robots so much shit. <laughs> they're going to oh, be they're, knocked they're, over. They're just going to knock them over. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> what are they going to do? Push back? Hey, well, do probably, you mind that's... if I sit with you? Get out of here, robot. <laughs> I don't fucking but, yeah. want you to this is what's gonna like. Trigger and then the we're face. gonna see. This is gonna yeah, be we're gonna see ro- <laughs> or we're gonna see robots on the news. Yeah, just headline news. No respect for manufactured Americans. I think that robot <laughs> pissed all over the floor. Yeah, I just thought that was funny when I heard about that. That we that we had just talked about it. <laughs> it's just I was like, oh, who shit all over the floor? Uh, I think it was Scrubby. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's been a lot of that lately, like a lot of <laughs> media about, you know, um, I guess cyborgs and androids and stuff and automation Automated and trucks. Like yeah. Automated delivery trucks. That's going to be the scary thing right there. Well, I mean, like a good percentage of um, even like I think males from like 40 or 30 to 50 uh, are in the trucking business. That retail and something else make a good portion of like just regular jobs. Like, well, you better pay me, me if you're gonna finally get replaced. You better still fucking pay me. They don't Stand have to. Oh, no, I, would, already... I actually yeah. heard some some stuff on another po- this other podcast that's not as good as the one we do. The guy's name's like Joe Rogan or something. I don't know, but he had a guest on that was talking about. Um, I guess this guy's running for he's, this guy's going to run for president, and he yeah, was I talking to these truckers. Guys. He was talking to the truckers, and he was like, you know, so what are you going to do whenever automated trucks take over your job? And they were just like, you know, they're just going to block the road. <laughs> you know, it's going to get violent. <laughs> oh, I guarantee it. So. Bunch of ignorant fools. <laughs> but also, it also makes me, it reminds me of, uh, like, maximum overdrive. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> All these trucks coming into a truck stop to get gas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. First of all, Maxim Overdrive is one of my guilty pleasures. It's a guilty it's pleasure. Movies. It's a horrible movie, but it's so bad because, like, every <laughs> every time that I watch that movie, here's our Maximum Overdrive review, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> every time I watch that movie and it gets to that part where they want to be fueled, I'm just like, wait it the fuck out. They have like they're giant trucks. What they're is like again, one yeah. highway, zero city? Just fucking wait the extra hour or two. <laughs> And I still want to know how these trucks, how, how do they see? Uh, that one had a crazy uh, goblin face. So Yeah, no, but it was using its mirror, like rear view mirror to like turn to look at Emilio Estevez. So could it see through the mirrors or? I don't like how you're trying to poke your logic into my movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Crank that ACDC. Yeah, the other say the entire <laughs> thing <laughs> is ACDC. So. Actually, I saw a copy of that at... Uh, Best Buy Battle with Kigo. They released it as some kind of anniversary thing. And man, the box art's awesome. It is. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really cool. But man, that movie is not worth 30 fucking dollars for the blue. See, my other question is, why doesn't the car that Maggie Simpson is in, why doesn't it try to kill her and her husband? (laughs) Oh, Lisa Simpson? Yeah, yeah, Lisa Simpson. Maggie doesn't talk. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Maggie's voice actor passed away today. (laughs) It's, uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to do another episode on that movie. I'd be down for that. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah if if you want to hear us talk about Maximum Overdrive, we're going to need 10,000 likes <laughs> before we'll do it. Yeah. Now we'll never watch Maximum Overdrive. Oh, man. Hey, we could just get a fucking uh, uh, Emilio Estevez. He ain't doing shit. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah. He, Coach Bob, hey! He will forever be Billy the Kid. He'll always be Coach Bombay to me. <laughs> Coach Bombay! Uh, you know, I'm surprised. Regulators! Dad has what? 
The Mighty Ducks. Oh, because it's a pure 90s movie, that's why. <laughs> sure they had to remake it. Remember that cartoon? Like, actual ducks? They were yeah. Like, oh, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Did, like, the 90s were full of that. There'd be, like, a successful movie, then there'd be, like, this weird, extreme interpretation of it. Like, you know, Ghostbusters and stuff. You know, Clerks had a TV show for, like, one season. I wonder why it was only one season. Yeah. I liked it. <laughs> That's it. I one was... viewer. It was Bill. <laughs> Two. It was me and my brother. <laughs> he watched it on the same TV. TV. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I doubt you were signed up with the Nielsen rating, so they probably didn't know you were watching it. Yeah, probably not. But, uh, well, he's going to make a uh, another Jay and Silent Bob movie. He needs yeah, money after it all went to his, like, recovery. I think it's a sequel. <laughs> oh. I think it's a sequel to Jay and Silent Bob Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Jay and Silent Bob rebooted. Yeah. Apparently he's lost a lot of weight. Well, yeah, he had a heart attack on the stage. He was filming, or right after filming, like, a special. So he kind of oh, had to. I'm glad he's okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, he had that heart attack. <clears throat> what was so funny is after... Yeah, once he once, once he survived, and, and they were like, "Okay, we can release you know the episode, you know the show that you were filming. We'll, we'll release it." They called it Silent but Deadly. I think that was the, like it was supposed to be the name all along. Now it's just oh, like it? oh. you know, just, just I was saying like he he name. almost I thought, um, sounded, I thought it sounded better when it was the other way around. He almost yeah he almost died. I was thinking he probably had to make another movie because like fucking hospital bills are out. Outrageous. Uh, come on. Kevin Smith has that cop out money, so yeah. Cop out? even make? No, he's got that. He's got that. Um, comic book man money. You know what? You're not. You're not joking. Like he's got some connections, so I'm sure he's fine. Hell, he even uh, wrote, he's he's wrote for a few comics. He did a uh, run on Daredevil. <clears throat> he's directed some of the CW shows too, so. Well, because the CW a lot's the only one that'll let him in with a hockey jersey on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, the Clerks TV show, I just saw it, it out of 175 custom reviews, it got a four and a half stars. Out of? Yeah, oh, okay. It uh, wasn't yeah, as good as the movies, though. Oh, I can't remember. I remember, like, one running joke, and they always go back to about them, like, it's pretend like how the camera is. It looks like they're like going up a wall, but it's not. They're just like on the street with rope. Pretend. Oh, yeah. It's like Batman. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Batman yeah. So, um, I think you'd like, I actually ran into Kerry at, uh, at his work the other day. Uh, so I feel like we're going to throw away the whole uh, movie rating thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, maybe just try something different. Um, we're not gonna start. Mind. We're not gonna start on this one though. <laughs> we're gonna do nah, the... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'll let you guys. Uh, I guess we'll just do. I mean, I know what this. You guys are gonna give this a zero. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what I would make it. <laughs> I know it made me laugh so hard that I almost broke my cell phone. So I'll give it a half a pretty. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> I'll give it. Uh, what? Uh, I give it like uh one we're, two. We're going. It's out of five. Remember. Oh yeah. Um. I give it a one because of the clown was kind of creepy. One and a half. One and a half. Oh, okay. I'm Being gonna, generous. I'm going to give it a three. Whoa. 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 <laughs> you got to remember, this, this is the second time I've seen this movie. Like, I've watched it twice already. Whoa. And I would I would watch it again. Go over to, we're going over to Carrie's house and we're going to find that poster yeah. on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> he's got, like, the shirt and he's got, like, a signed copy. She got a mug and everything. Actually, Carrie was the guy that directed it. He just went by a different name. <laughs> oh, yeah. shit. Now I feel bad for shitting on him. Yeah. He's no, so Carrie, nice. we, we liked it. We were just giving, you know, giving that guy a hard time, but we didn't know it was you. Two two words, Billy. Terror vision. Terror vision. <laughs> See, terror vision is a lot better than this. No, nah, no, it wasn't. Oh, man. <laughs> I almost have to agree. Like, this one was just... Yeah! Woo! At least, least Terror Vision was, like, 
it was entertaining enough to where it like kept frustrating me. Like I had to come back and watch some more. And I was like, ah, this is still crap. <laughs> it's it bad. Better. But yeah, like TerraVision and what was the other one? America's Deadly Home Video. Yes, it is. No, I fucking actually slogged through that in one go. Uh, that and uh, New Year's Evil. Yeah, New Year's Evil was like an abusive relationship. I, like I turned it <laughs> off and it kept coming back to it like an <laughs> asshole. See, I liked the New Year's Evil too. I mean, it was fun, but what, the best, like you said, was the best use of somebody getting a dummy thrown off a building ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just <laughs> nah, well, I can tell that this one took it out of you guys. So, <laughs> um, yeah, um, seems like we get a lot of followers on our Twitter. Yes, Twitter sauce. I just wish those followers would turn into listeners. Yeah, I'm Come sure on, guys or do better listen to us, right? We'll unleash the the, the Corman monster on you. <laughs> Come to your bedrooms while you're asleep. The oh no! Man. Here comes spider tits. Here oh, comes spider tits. Spider tits. <laughs> that was whatever a titty does. So you haven't heard heard what? My whole family was murdered by spider tits five years ago. I don't want to talk about it. It was a giant titty with spider legs. Horrifying. Oh, my God. It ate my family. Now, is it a giant titty with spider legs, or is it a spider that has eight titties <laughs> for legs? No, it's a... It's, no, it's a... <laughs> I was like, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I was waiting for, I was waiting for that because I was like, I was like, oh my god, please let him say titty legs. (laughs) I was about to burst out laughing, (laughs) fall on the floor. It's a titty with titty legs. No, it's a, it's a, it's a titty with spider legs. So we got like, (laughs) never mind. I prefer the spider. Yeah, and all those spider legs are. Teeny, itty bitty <laughs> titties. Man. Okay, so <laughs> we just invented a new genre, the horror porno. <laughs> <laughs> and our next venture will be like, I don't know, spider tits versus cocktopus. <laughs> that's that's where the money is, boys. Let's do that. Or no, uh, spider tits versus anal actor. <laughs> Jesus. That's going to be the butt of a lot of jokes. <laughs> yeah. It's a raptor anal tar. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and wrap this one up. <clears throat> Where can they find you at, Billy? They can find me at Spider Tit. Not they can find me at Basalt Wizard at Twitter. And Eric? Uh, hell, just check out my new podcast. It's uh, Beards Brews Cast on Twitter. There you go, and you can find me at 1313inc. And of course, if you go to 1313inc.wordpress.com, you can find this show, Eric's new show, and the Poet Grim podcast, and all the information for all the shows will be on there. And like I said, uh, Podbean, wherever you listen to them at, uh, make sure you go buy a t-shirt. I ordered a t-shirt. It should be in Monday. I will be modeling it, taking pictures. And, you know, if you want to, get on the uh, Patreon and give us some money there. Appreciate y'all listening. And we'll do this again next week. And as always, spider tits. As always, (laughs) spider tits. Incorporated, a network of podcasts.